Hi, I'm Andres Robledo, and I hate hyper realism. Welcome to Grumble Goat. My name is Matt Labodka, and this is a show about all the small things that drive me insane. Let's grumble. The thing about it is, is that everyone is just trying to be so real, so avant garde with their media, their art. It's just a little too much. It's a little self aggrandizing. It's like, guys, can we please tell a story? Can we just tell the story? story. We, I think people forget that people are going to forgive a lot for a good story. Like, let's put a child in a movie for seven years and then uh, market that. What, what? Why? I can get it. I can get it if you put child in month one and Bradley Cooper in at the end of the month. You know, I just don't understand the narrative elements to hyperrealism. There's this wonderful thing called the suspension of disbelief. It's a magical thing. Trust your audience. They're like, oh, I know that this person isn't in my actual head talking to me. They're in my headphones. They're talking into a mic in another room. It does not detract from the story when you tell a little lie. It's not about just telling the hard truth. There's so much hard truth out there today. I literally have had it up to here with the hard truth, especially on stage. It's like, okay, you're choreographing a fight and the slap doesn't look real. Why don't you just hit him in the actual face? Oh, you want to know why you don't do that? Because it hurts. Let's just back off a little bit and, and, and do a little magic trick. I get the audience to be like, oh, I see what they did there. Not like, oh, did they hurt that guy? Is that guy okay? Oh, why did they do that? It's not that deep, y'all. We really honestly can do a lot better than just unearthing the deepest, most honest part of the human soul. Can we like nod to it? You know, can we flirt with the truth a little bit? Honestly, that sounds more fun. Let's let's do a little bit of flirting and a little less creepy weird. I'm Andres Robledo and I hate hyperrealism. And that's the grumble. Grumble, 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 grumble. What? Grumble, 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 grumble. What's got your goat? For the latter half of the show, we'll bring in my better half, Veronique, for an unpretentious look and a segment we call What's got your goat? What's up, Farnick? Do you believe in life after love, 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 love? Okay, great. Yeah. A right. little bit of share. I'm sharing today. A little bit of today. I'm sharing. Well, we are, we are sharing, actually. We're sharing. We're because sharing the studio today. We're sharing the studio. <laughs> we're sharing the studio yeah. today. Andres Robledo is here. Woo! Hooray. Hi, everybody. Hello. Andres, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, well rested. Feeling uh, much better than I have in the last couple of weeks. So well rested. Yeah. You're just coming out of Tech Week, though. I know. Huh. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Well, yes. I'm in Tech Week for Hamlet. Ooh, uh, really, Hamlet. Really fun show for I've, all ages. I've always wanted to play Hamlet. Oh, I could see you being a Hamlet. We have we have a lady Hamlet. Ah, I love that. Yeah. I you have, have a lady. See Hamlet. the a lady Hamlet. All right. A female presenting Hamlet, if you will. Excellent. I love Lovely. It. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I'm the fight choreographer for it. So it turns out that my job actually kind of is over around Tech Week. <gasps> Ooh. Um, yeah. Yeah, snap, yeah. Snap, nice. Snap, snap. Snaps. You know? Your job is over, and so they put you to work doing other things, right? E exactly, yes, because we are still a small <laughs> theater company. We are a mad theater company. And so <laughs> getting people to do things is... Hard. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's, you know, it's theater, so we all know it doesn't pay very well. No. Yes. Uh, MAD is the theater company. MAD. Is that an acronym for something? It isn't. It's no. Just, oh, they're just MAD. Yeah. Get, oh, are they well. mad or are we mad about MAD theater? Listen, get mad, <laughs> do good. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let's get mad. Yeah, yeah well, do good. Hamlet yeah. is mad. Hamlet get yeah, he's he well, yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> oh yes. quite, quite. And quite. also very angry often. You right. know, just does a lot of Yeah, <laughs> mad in both senses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. And this is happening at Theater Row. Yes, it is happening at Theater Row. It's our little off Broadway debut. When oh can gosh. we see the show? The show opens tonight, which <gasps> oh. is May 31st. Ooh. Congratulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. So get your tickets. 
Get to your Hamlet. tickets. Uh-huh. Theater and Row. We got six shows a week, which Ooh, is nice. pretty something. Hey-oh. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Wednesday through Sunday. So, yeah. Lovely. I know. That's the best part of the week. Yes, it is. <laughs> I have to agree with you. <laughs> well, congratulations on the opening. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 That's that's great. I'm going to be going to see it. I won't be seeing it tonight, but I'm going to be going to see it. Yes. Oh, you um, will? I'm going to try and get Veronique to see it, but yes. our schedules often conflict. Yes, because we but that would be great. Things. That is so nice. Yes. yes I'd love it. It's a very decent Shakespeare. You Lovely. Know, is like pretty good. I love like, it. I give, okay. a, I give a thumbs up right now. Yes. You heard it here, folks. Yes, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> we got a pretty good one. <laughs> yeah. No, All but, right. but honestly, you never know. When you see Shakespeare, you never know what you're going to walk into when you see people doing Shakespeare. Do you remember that time we walked into Prospect Park? I mean, I've been there We're, quite <laughs> oh. often. <laughs> Anyway, one time I was walking through Prospect Park and stumbled. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I may or may not have been with somebody. <laughs> one time I was walking through Prospect Park and I happened upon a production. It was an all-female cast doing The Tempest in the nude. Uh, definitely never saw it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would remember that. It yeah. was yeah. it was wild and it was terrible. Oh, mm. they, so you stayed. Good for you. And they, <laughs> I, I think I watched the production for about 15 minutes. It felt, you know, sometimes they use nudity to like make a point mm. or bring out something, some humanity of something. Yeah. But it seemed like they were just poorly reading the lines as an excuse to be naked mm. is what it felt like. Yeah. The Tempest. OK, so it takes place on this whatever. It's this, an island. Yeah, this island that, I mean, it's pretty much untouched except for the it, few They denizens. could be nude in the Tempest. I mean, that checks out, right? Yeah. And, and it does open with that line. What happened to all our luggage? Oh. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> Got it. Yes. What happened to all our dang luggage? I remember that. <laughs> Shoot, my entire wardrobe went down with the ship. I mean, hey, I love to be naked, right? This is I a love free to, baller over here. I love to walk around, you know, my apartment. I love to be free. Which is why she's not wearing any clothes now. I mean, as mm-hmm. you can see, it's just flowers. It's just flowers. <laughs> um, Excellent aesthetic. But via theater... If it doesn't serve the story, it is distracting to me. And I've seen some nudity shows and I get distracted a little bit. Right. Because it's like, oh, and it's not like you get attracted to someone, but you just in in America, it was founded with Puritans here. So like there is no matter what a sense of like, oh, my God, there are no clothes, you know, scandal, yeah. you know, I, and then you, I, I just find myself getting distracted and I can't hear the story as much that, that I'm watching someone on someone else's back jumping up and down and that person's nude and I'm watching something <laughs> jump up and down and I'm like, I'm not listening anymore. Exactly. And then you're, you're trying to focus in but you're not acclimated yet you're kind of like being jarred back and forth between like this like very real very like you know like oh they have their bodies pressing up against each other and like oh and then there's this little story that they're also telling so i'm just like where uh, you gotta blend it story first yeah i get distracted by all the bouncing bits well that's what i'm saying (laughs) i was very distracted like yeah even if it's not an attraction thing it's like that must be uncomfortable yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's like a little just too real for me it's like, That's, yeah, because if I'm in a public space and there's some sort of theatrical orgy happening or something, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I just need to have a prep for that. I'm I'm down. <laughs> I'm down with the system. I would like a sign. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like the nymphs verse. are cavorting. Yeah. It's like when you go into a building where they might be filming something, there's a sign outside that says, by walking in here, you're consenting to maybe being in the background of this film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if they don't have that sign that. and you like walk into it, then it's sort of like, it's awkward for everyone at that point. Because, yeah. you know, like then this like fantasy world and then in the real world they're kind of like meeting in a place where they never wanted to meet i guess mm, yeah so yeah i have a problem with like art being so focused on being hyper real uh-huh. it's um it what do you hyper realism as a artistic expression thinking about like boyhood where you know like let's just take this child and film this yeah, over let's, seven years yeah let's just film this boy let's just film this boy as he grows up we'll yeah. commit his Put whole this life boy to under the film <laughs> <laughs> we shall watch his entire life through film <laughs> he can't move no he can't move he can't grow or he has to grow or I, you let's know. grow no no we'll do it in time lapse <laughs> we'll do a montage for his growth 
<laughs> right. It's as if someone said, I don't want to pretend I want to do. Yeah. Instead of like, give yourself the world of pretend of becoming someone else to watch the same person go. I, I don't I don't necessarily know what I think it's interesting. I don't know what the value is if someone couldn't have accomplished the same thing with different actors going through that boyhood because essentially the writer would be, you know, so you, the writing is where the shift in the change of the character is and then the growth and the adolescence. It's in the writing. It's not necessarily in, you know, it's a, it, how can it be real if you wrote it? Right. What, what, right? Are, are you are you for or against hyper real? I don't know. I'm so confused. I'm <laughs> out of my body. Yeah. It, it sounded really intellectual. The words <laughs> that were coming you. out of your mouth. But I was, I like, know. I was sure. like, wow, she is smart. What, what stance <laughs> is she taking? <laughs> it's divisive. Um, yeah, hyper realism. Okay, can we get an example? Can we get a definition of hyper realism? Hyper realism is what happens like for season nine of Game of Thrones, where they want to film a giant battle scene in the middle of the night. And so the screen is just black. black. And oh you see gosh. like one torch in the middle of your screen yes. and you hear swords clanging yeah. but you can't see a thing and that's hyper realism that is hyper as opposed to the lord of the rings the battle at helm's deep it was all lit well but with blue light mm. so it was the illusion of night mm -hmm. but it was lit yeah and at one point elijah wood asked where is the light coming from oh interesting and the director said the same place the music is <laughs> that's so beautiful yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah because it's art yeah. yes yeah we we know we as the viewer no, it's nighttime, but we want to see what's on the screen. Yes. We don't want hyper realism. The thing about theater and television and film is that it's not real life. That's why we want to watch it. You know, I'm, I'm writing something right now that I'm drawing upon my own life. And my coach has to constantly be like, this is not your life. You are writing a different story. No one wants to watch just like me going to the grocery store. I mean, maybe you do, but <laughs> I'm just saying like, you know, there are streamers. no one wants to pay for something real. It like, it makes me think about the way like, oh yeah, that slap doesn't look good on stage. Just hit them, just like slap them in the face. And it's like, um, well, but that hurts, right? <laughs> that hurts. Yeah, no. That hurts six many, times a week. That's right, like you, you can't, no. Right. It's called pretend. It's called suspension of disbelief. Yeah. It's a play. It's, we're having a good time, we're yeah. playing. Yes. Yeah. The, the one thing that I would hate to have ever be said to me is that it was a little self-indulgent. <laughs> like then you're like. I think the last play I saw you in was a little self-indulgent. <laughs> Okay, not I her. did not have a big part, yeah. and I don't think <laughs> you're talking the, about the, me. Oh my uh, gosh. Oh, you yeah. weren't chewing the scenery? The thing about burning? reality. Hilarious. <laughs> the thing about hyper-realism is I wake up into hyper-realism every day. I live in New York, you know? I can walk out of the street and see a performance on any block. Oh, you know? yeah. It's, it, people are being people everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, when I go into the theater, I don't want to be made uncomfortable with a lens reflecting real life. I want to feel comforted knowing that what I'm watching is a presented piece. Yes, a well thought out. Yeah. It, it does something to you. We, we just saw Cabaret with Eddie Redmond yeah. and it was fantastic. And they really do, you walk into the Kit Kat Club and that is like cool. But if I were to actually walk into the real Kit Kat Club, you know, it's like you don't want people actually snorting cocaine in the corner. Right. And you don't actually want to see people actually having sex in front of you and you're watching cabaret. You know, you can imagine that stuff happening. Yeah. I could have used a, a couple couples having sex in front of me. That would have been OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yes. No, oh, Naked my, Tempest, right. Yeah, I think I think the, <laughs> the best realism that you achieve when when you're walking into that Kit Kat Club was the confusion of like wh which level do i go on which oh yeah <laughs> which door do i go to excuse me right. which bar do i go and to that's like, the realist i want to get yeah, <laughs> yes. exactly that's all the real life, just finding my seat yeah <laughs> i think about sleep no more oh, right sure. in the mckittrick yeah. that is also sort of like it's cool you know because we're we're walking into something we're yeah. kind of in there but then one actor pulls you off into this into a room and then you kind of have to sit there and listen to a monologue and i'm like am i gonna get kissed right Right now or what uh, and it's not a good feeling because I want to I want to hear your piece but I know that you're not talking to me right you're right. talking to uh, something else so yeah. don't talk to me right in real life I'm too locked up to feel that or to understand yeah. that 
Yeah. So our, we all got trauma. Hey, we got it. Right. We all got, we got and it by in, the dozen. In New York, we're all trained to like, if somebody says something to you on the street, just ignore them, blow past them. If somebody's trying to hand you something, do not grab it. You know, we're trained to like close ourselves off. And so when we walk into the theater, we want to be comforted. We're open. And if the actors are talking directly to our face, we're, we're going back into that into that mentality. We're going yeah. back into that closed off -edness. Like, what do I do? What do I do? I How mean, do I handle the situation? Breaking the fourth wall, I'm okay with. I just want to know that the thing that I have paid to watch has been well thought out. This is my next point. <laughs> She, she, see, now that you're in the studio, she likes to do this. She'll hyper focus on somebody and shove realness in their face. Well, <laughs> how do you feel about method acting? Oh, because oh. that's a that's a delicate balance. Method acting. Yeah, right? it, method acting is just an excuse to be a jerk. You think so? That's what that is. Like it's called acting. Right. right. The tool is to like, you know, go into a character and come out of the character, not to live in the skin of a character. Could it be could it be considered self-indulgent? Yeah, I don't know. It sounds is it like selfish. Yeah, like, it, it's a little it sounds like hoodoo, you know? Hoodoo? It, it, yeah, just like uh, I'm doing is this. That, is that another streaming app? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the voodoo hoodoo app. Um, <laughs> uh, so cute. <laughs> no, that it's it's like I'm, I'm going to ritualize this and I'm going to somehow unlock some dark power. Of, of, of actually becoming this person. Well, it's kind of hard. I mean, people, some people have the luxury of turning into somebody else and not having to go to right. work and so not yeah, having to pay Some of us have full-time jobs. But like, some of us have to pay rent. <laughs> some... <laughs> Veronique, what, what stories come to mind with, when you talk about hyper-realism? Well, what's the definition of hyper-realism? Oh, we're back. Right. And we're, we're back. back. That's right. <laughs> Veronique, it's time. Yes. Why don't you tell us what hyper-realism mm, is? Fantastic. I think it's a bunny jumping up and down, crazed, <laughs> lasers out of their eyes, <laughs> and they say, this is real. <laughs> pew, 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 um, pew. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. You know where is a good example of hyper-realism? Talk what, to us. Where? At the circus. Oh. At the circus when they're doing the lion taming, oh. right? And they got the big cats in the ring with yeah. the, you know, the, the cat tamer. Yeah. And he's got the chair and the whip. Have you ever seen the it? lion tamer? What did I say? Cat tamer. Big cats. Yeah. The big cat like tamer. Little ones. You know, like like picture Laurent, <laughs> but like a couple sizes bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cat tamer. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got the whip and he loses control. <laughs> Yeah, that's when hyper realism really comes in because you're like, is, are the cats trained to attack this person? Yeah, yeah, and they're clawing, and you're like, what's going on? So, am I about to watch somebody die live in front of me? And so, and like, you're, man, I tell you, there's there's no point in the circus when you're more engaged with what's going on than when there's an angry cat. Absolutely. Ooh. Absolutely. Are you sure they're not just acting? I mean, it could be. Like, that could be method they're acting. They're method acting. I really got into the skin of a tiger for this role. <laughs> <laughs> Literally put on the pelt of a tiger. What am I doing here? What's my motivation? What's my motivation? Here? Yeah. Have you ever seen that where they have to turn the hose on the cats? No, no I, like it, I, I actually I have haven't seen it. that. I've only seen it where it's like, oh, it looks like it could be, and then it doesn't. And yeah. then I am actually quite titillated by that, though. Yeah. So cats oh, don't like acting, is what you're saying. They're, they're not... They're, they're not, not an acting type. I just not. don't think they're very good. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an episode of Grumble Goat. Thanks for listening. I'm Matt Labotka. I'm Veronique Hurley. Please subscribe. I hate when people say please subscribe. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Did they hurt that guy? Oh, why did they do that? We did it. We've conquered another one of life's little annoyances. But the truth is, what I really hate is commercials. And I'll wager you do too. And that's why Grumble Goat is proudly commercial free. But to keep it that way, it takes the support of fellow grumblers like you. If you hate commercials, head on over to our Patreon page and see if becoming a Grumble Kid is right for you. And as always, don't forget to Grumble Goat responsibly and share with a friend. Grumble, 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 grumble. Pa, 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 pa.